life without kids really. And it's just such a shame that there's nothing wrong with the fertility of either of us. You can get used to the whole illness side of it and it's a life-threatening condition and not being close to not surviving and all that. But it's not just affecting you anymore, it's affecting your family as well. And it's affecting your future. And it makes me angry. This is a film about what happens when someone with HIV tries to have a baby. Andrew Evans is HIV positive. His wife, Michelle, isn't. She's more of a disabled cripple than I am, I tell you. <laughs> can't say that. No, you can't say that. <laughs> you probably forget most of the time, don't you? Yeah. I think a lot Just... of people do. Andrew never thought he'd be able to have a child safely. But the couple have been given funding by the government for a pioneering technique, which means he and Michelle might be able to do just that. For the past nine months, they have allowed us to follow them as they try to start a family. We had a chat about my situation and what it meant with regards to having kids and that there was this new sperm washing process out there. And, you know, we decided that it was worth giving it a shot. The Chelsea and Westminster Hospital in London is one of the few places in the world to offer a procedure called sperm washing. They have the facilities to clean Andrew's sperm of the HIV virus before placing it into Michelle's womb. Sperm washing is to reduce the risk of HIV being passed from sperm to the female partner or, and then to the child. There's no way a man can infect a child. He has to infect the female partner first. So what we've done with sperm washing is to prevent transmission to the uninfected partner. Come in, have a seat. How are you both? Fine, thank you. Right. Having children is a very important part of full life, particularly if you're in a, in a happy relationship, and not to be able to fulfil that dream without putting your partner at risk is, is really, really quite terrible. To know pretty much from the day that you're told that you have this infection that you've got such a slim chance of having a child, to now have the opportunity just means the world to me. And, you know, that Michelle is willing to go through all of this to help that happen, you know, it's just overwhelming, really. Oh, it means everything because, you know, I just want Andrew to have that feeling that you get when you first see your newborn child. I just want Andrew to be able to experience that because it's so amazing. Andrew and Michelle were married in May 2007. It was perfect. It was really small. It was just intimate. I wouldn't have done it differently. First of all, I'd just like to ask you to raise all of your glasses, please, because I would like you to toast my beautiful wife, Michelle. Michelle! The couple had already started to think about having children. I think we thought about it straight away, because we knew it was going to be such a long process. We initially went to see my consultant, and he suggested that instead of going down the sperm washing route, to normally try to conceive. We were so shocked, actually, that a consultant would say to somebody, a couple in our situation, you know, just have sex at the right time of the month and, you know, see how that goes. I think we both sat there and looked at each other and we just couldn't believe that he was suggesting such a thing. And I know Andrew, if he'd infected me, he wouldn't be able to forgive himself, so it just, just wasn't an option. I don't think we'd ever just consider having unprotected sex. Andrew grew up with HIV, having been infected when he was just a child. When I was five years old, one day, my mum and I would have woken up and either she or I would have injected some HIV contaminated blood into my hand or my arm without realising that we were doing it. I was born a haemophiliac, it's a hereditary condition. What it means is that I'm missing a, a clotting factor in my blood so my bleeding doesn't stop. I have to take a, something called factor VIII replacement. I have to inject it into a vein and that replaces what I'm missing in my bloodstream. 
and helps the bleeding to stop. In the late 70s and early 80s, that replacement factor VIII was taken from human blood. And of course, HIV and AIDS have contaminated quite a lot of the factor VIII supply across the world. It was probably me that infected him. But it doesn't matter because if it was not me, it would have been him or somebody at the hospital. So there's no point in laying blame. Andrew was told he had HIV when he was 12. Well, Dad and I didn't tell you at first because there didn't seem any point in you being worried and upset about it. If you were feeling OK, you know. And do you think maybe there was part of it that you really just didn't want to have to go through the process of telling me as well? I'm almost positive that's one of the reasons, yeah. yeah. Well, I can, I can understand that. I think it's one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. Andrew and Michelle live in Worcestershire, a couple of hours from London, with Michelle's daughter Evie. I'll never get my robot right. Oh, I think you will. She is like my daughter, but then I remember that I didn't see her growing up from a baby. You know, we met when she was almost three years old. It's important to me to kind of feel a part of everything from the beginning. I think it would be really nice to have a little baby around and to be able to watch them grow up into, well, into the kind of person that Evie is now, really. You're mad as a box of frogs. To give the couple the best chance of conceiving, Michelle has to monitor her ovulation. When she is at her most fertile, the couple can head to London for treatment. First thing in the morning, Andrew has to provide a sample of his sperm to be washed. Okay, same procedure in the pots in the hatch, you ring the bell once, okay? Okay. Can I just confirm your partner's details are correct? Yeah, they are. Okay, that's for you as well. Thank you. Sperm washing is a phrase which was coined to try and visually represent what we're doing, but it's in fact a simple centrifugation process to separate the sperm into its components. The theory behind sperm washing is that the HIV virus attaches to all the non-sperm cells in the seminal fluid and not actually to the sperm itself. Um, so what we're doing is we're trying to wash um, the sperm free from all the non-sperm cells. I've just put the samples in the centrifuge and they'll be spinning for about 20 minutes. The process, including testing, takes all day. At four o'clock, the couple are called back in for Michelle's intrauterine insemination. It's not very really nice, really, so that's the, probably the worst thing about it. Just try and relax as much as possible. It's ironic, really, that I'm the one with the problem, yet Michelle has to go through the most invasive procedure on the day. Hopefully but, you'll just know it was a very wanted child. Yeah. Pregnancy testing 14 days from today. Between now and then, there's nothing the couple can do but wait. Just carry on as normal, but take into consideration that you've had a procedure. OK? But let us know, so good luck. OK. I'm going to go and do a pregnancy test now. I'm doing it a day early because I can't wait to find out the results, so we'll see what it says. It's just the not knowing. You just sort of try and, you, well, try not to, but you, every little sort of twinge or something you have, you think, oh, you know, is that a sign? Right, I'm just going to wait for two minutes now to get the results. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Every little thing that Michelle had going on with her body, we sort of examined in minute detail. Moment of truth. Okay, I'm good. You know, you'd built yourself up to the fact that this thing could actually have worked. No. Not pregnant. When the test comes back negative, you just sort of... devastated, really. You've been on such an emotional roller coaster by that point that I think, you know, just the deflation, just, it, it's exhausting. Coming up, Andrew and Michelle get another chance to try for a baby. And I'm convinced that this is the way forward. I'm hoping that first time round you'll get pregnant as well. Andrew Evans is HIV positive. Two months ago, he and his wife Michelle discovered that their attempt to conceive a baby had failed. 
today, they are in London with Michelle's daughter, Evie, for another sperm wash and insemination treatment. We're at the Science Museum today because we have a lot of time to kill in between our two sections of treatment at Chelsea and Westminster. So um, we have Evie here with us today and we thought it'd be nice to bring her to the Science Museum, wouldn't we? Yep. <laughs> oh, God, that's scary. She's indicated that she knows we're trying to make a baby, but I don't think she associates the two together. No. She, well, she keeps asking for like a brother or sister. We just have yeah. to say we're trying our best. When is the baby coming? It's all quite frustrating, really, isn't yeah. it? It's been a long time getting to this stage. Yeah, because like this time last year, we thought we'd be sort of well and truly pregnant by now. We didn't think we'd still be trying. This morning, Andrew deposited a sample of sperm to be washed at the hospital. This afternoon, they have to return so it can be put into Michelle's womb. This time, I'd rather not have the cameras in because it's an intimate procedure. It's not very pleasant. And... So the less people in there, the better, really. Just get it over with as quickly as possible. This is the couple's last funded attempt to have a baby with artificial insemination. We get quite desperate sometimes, don't yes. we? We really want this to work. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the best one that we've had so far. It was really relaxed, it was really quick, mm. didn't hurt. You seem much happier when you yeah. came out this time. Yeah, didn't feel shaky or emotional afterwards. Just felt, felt really good, feel really positive. Mm. Probably because it is our last time, there's kind of a sense of relief as well, isn't yeah. there? That we don't have to do it again. Yeah, hopefully we don't have to do that process again. In May 2007, Andrew and Michelle got married, seven months after they met at a weekend for people who had lost loved ones to AIDS. Michelle's brother, like Andrew, was an haemophiliac, infected with HIV. He died when she was 16. As a child, I didn't know anything was wrong. Um, my mum and dad did a lot to shield it all from me. So it was all a bit secretive and I was just left to work things out by myself. And I miss just having that normal, normality. We didn't have a normal childhood. I think a normal life is what most people strive for, isn't it? You know, to be the same as everybody else. Today, Andrew is on his way to St. Botolph's Church in London. It's home to a book of remembrance for UK haemophiliacs who have died because of contaminated blood. There were around about 1,250 people that were originally haemophiliacs infected with HIV. Well over three quarters have actually died so far and continuing to die at the rate of around about 12 a year. So it's still a very, very deadly illness. And it's just a really nice thing to have, I think, to be able to come here at any time and, and look at this and, and remember. I think it's become a forgotten illness. I think most people, if you mention HIV and AIDS to them now, think that it's a past problem. But that's just not the case. People are still dying every day. I know that it's not the bed of roses that people make it out to be. The medications that are out there are by no means ideal and the increase of new cases every year is quite astonishing. And I think by telling people in no uncertain terms that they do not want to get this virus, I'm hoping that they'll pay attention. Andrew knows exactly how HIV can destroy lives. He was hospitalised for most of his teenage years and when he was 18, he was given two weeks to live. I think it was the morning of your 18th birthday we brought you home. They let me out. Let you out for a special mm. event. He wasn't well, but well enough to come home. And we knew it would be his last birthday, really. And we had to, a surprise party for him. And loads That's of the right. nurses from the hospital came as well. And uh, it was just a lovely evening. And we thought, that's it, that's going to be the last one. We were all so tired, I suppose, of, um, of the illness and what it was doing to him. New AIDS drugs helped save Andrew. Today, He's going to see someone else who owes their life to the medication. 
Perry Evans is living with HIV. He and his wife Heather have also undergone sperm washing at the Chelsea and Westminster. Hello. Hello, Perry. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Come on in. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Ninety children have been born in the UK thanks to the treatment. <laughs> Isaac and Kerry Ann are two of them. We've had our own experiences of what it's been like over the past, well, over a year now really? to get to this stage. And I know that we've had a lot of ups and downs emotionally and what have you. I was just wondering what your journey was like, really. I, mean, I think it felt like getting on a roller coaster ride. You don't have control anymore, and you're just on this ride, you've just got to see it through. Yeah. Just forever trying to stay mentally strong, forever trying to and not dwell too much on what could happen and just, you know, mm -hmm. get through. Even without the complication of, of HIV, um, just to go through IUI and, and IV or IVF mm. is, is quite an ordeal, I think, you know, for... It's quite for, intimate and invasive yeah. and nobody wants to have to go through anything like that, no, really. There were times in that two-week block where you really felt pregnant mm. and you really felt like something's that changed found that, yeah. and then you're not. Yeah. And that feels so cruel. Yeah. Mm. And well, that's not long because it feels like forever. It does. Really good. Yeah. Despite their words of support, the two-week wait has not been easy for Andrew and Michelle. Now the morning of the pregnancy test has arrived. Go and do it now. Okay. <laughs> oh, if Michelle is pregnant this time, I think they'll just be the biggest family celebration. I just don't. I, there'll be none to match it. I think the, the the families will be just so excited and pleased and. I've long thought about what it would be like if we actually get that positive result. It would just be amazing. No. Oh. <laughs> kind of what we were expecting there, wasn't it? This is Andrew Evans. Um, I just uh, wanted to call to tell you that we've done the uh, pregnancy test today and unfortunately it's come back negative. So um, I was wondering if someone could give us a call back please to let us know what the next step would be. Um, that would be great, thank you. Bye. Andrew and Michelle have not been granted any further funding for artificial insemination. Until they see their doctor in London, they don't know what will happen next. It's very frustrating that although Michelle and I are apparently two very fertile people and would normally have no trouble conceiving, um, that we've had to include medical professionals, we've had to do so much travelling, we've had to um, really take advantage of cutting edge science and have a lot of money spent on us to be able to do something that really ought to be a very, very natural, very personal process. Well, today we're off to London, um, really to see where we go from here, I guess. Uh, we've got a consultation with Dr. Carol Gilling-Smith at the Chelsea and Westminster ACU. She makes the decisions really about what we go ahead with. So uh, we just hope we find her in a good mood today and she's receptive to our wishes as well. OK, do you want to come through? The couple are hoping that she will put them on a cycle of IVF, a process in which Michelle's eggs would be fertilised by Andrew's washed sperm outside the womb before being returned. It's a more complicated procedure than the one they've gone through before, but it has a far greater chance of success. I would say in your age group the chances of the IVF working are 40%, 45%. That's pretty good, isn't it? And I'm convinced that this is the way forward. I'm hoping that first time round you'll get pregnant as well. I don't think that that consultation could have gone any better. Really, no, it went really, really well. What she told us was that we're going to be starting a course of IVF and that will be starting hopefully in November. I think if we'd have handed her a script with what we wanted her to say on it, I don't think she could have said it any better than she did. So, yeah, it's really good. In a couple of months, you never know. Embarking on a pregnancy is an emotional journey for anybody. Um, they will never really relax until they've got uh, the baby in their arms, which I know they will. I know that they will get pregnant. 
I think we've got a really good chance of it succeeding in the next Don't couple we? of months. And there's no way that we'd change that for anything. No, definitely not. We'd do it, do it all again, wouldn't we? If we had to. Oh, definitely, yeah. I don't think there's anything we'd rather have at the moment than, than that positive on the pregnancy test no. in a couple of months. That would just be perfect, wouldn't it? That would complete our little family. Yeah. See that green and cream building on the river over there? where all the secret spies live. I just want to have my own child to be able to say, look, here's my child. This is not the end of me. I want to be able to enjoy as much time as I can bringing up that child. I just want to have the same right as any other person has to have that. And I don't think I'd make a bad dad. <laughs>